Happy New Year. Today we're going to look at the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. And I'm so glad you're with me today. We're going to study our Bibles together. So have your Bible and look these verses up with me. It's 2024, and this is the New Hope Road Church of Christ Ladies Bible Class. We are beginning with Book 2 of Singing with the Understanding. And today, the first lesson we're going to cover is the hymn, Holy, 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 which had me thinking things that we take for granted. We're so very blessed, and it is so easy for us to worship God. In the study of this hymn and the verses, you you um, go back to the Old Testament and learn the things that they were to do in worshiping God, the, the animals they were to kill, and the blood everywhere, and the things that they were commanded to do. And it is so very easy for us in the 21st century to worship God, and we can take that for granted. And we are not asked too much. There's so much that we can take for granted. And I am talking to myself. I am not fussing at anybody. I'm talking to myself. There's so much that I can take for granted, that I'm relatively healthy, that we are so very blessed having a beautiful home and, and a wonderful position William has as being a preacher and being able to help others. And and all of the, the safety that we have, the area in the world that we live in, because there are areas of the world where people are not safe. There's so much we can take for granted. So I was just thinking as we start this new year, let's remember to stop into, I am trying to remember to stop and to be thankful for all that we are given, for all that I am given. And, and what a privilege it is to worship and how easy it is to worship God and to follow what is in the Bible, what is prescribed for us to do, how to worship God on the first day of the week. So we are going to look at this hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Let's first learn a little bit about the author. His name was Reginald Heber. He lived from 1783 to 1826. He was born in England, the son of a minister in the Church of England. Reginald Heber attended Oxford. He loved to write poetry, which transferred to him wanting to write hymns. He actually, he became a minister as his father was. He actually went to India on behalf of the Church of England and did extensive work in there, which was hard on him physically. And he ended up having a stroke at just the age of 42. So he lived from 18, I'm sorry, 1783 to 1826 and died at 42. But he is who wrote the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. So let's begin by reading the first verse. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Now, in actually, we're going to do this a little bit different. In the, the workbook, Singing with the Understanding, they're using a hymnal that has a different ending. It says, at the end, it says, 
God over all and blessed eternally. That is not how it was written originally. I'm going to go back to how it was written originally. And thankfully, that is how the hymnal we use, um, the Sacred Songs of the Church, has it. It is, it is written as God in three persons, blessed trinity. I do not know why they would change it in some hymnals. Do they not believe in the tr trinity? Let's look at a verse that that absolutely teaches us that there is the trinity. Let's go in our Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. Turn with me, 1 John chapter 5, and let's read verse 7. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. God the Father, the Word, which is the Son, Jesus Christ, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These three are one. So that is exactly what is meant by Mr. Heber, who said, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Okay. Why do you think in the hymn it says, holy, holy, holy? Now we are going to read verses directly connected to that. But in the Hebrew, repeating things three times, three times saying holy is complete or perfection or something is pure. Let's, let's go to Isaiah chapter 6, and we are going to read verse 3. Isaiah 6, 3. This is the seraphim that we're going to talk about in a little bit. The seraphim are, are um, speaking to each other, starting in verse 3. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So right here in the scriptures where we see holy, holy, holy. And of course, in the, throughout the hymn, it's repeated over and over again. That, that phrase, the three times said. Okay, so let's go to, um, let's go to verse 2 and let's read verse 2. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who wert and art and evermore shalt be. Now, again, another difference in the two hymnals. This hymnal that the workbook is using has this verse 2. Our hymnal that we use at New Hope Road has left this verse out. We only have three verses of the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. But here is a verse from the workbook from, um, let me go back to where it says this, the hymns and the songs in this workbook are taken from the hymnal called Hymns for Worship, published by the Shepherd Stevens Music Company. Okay, so, um, Verse 2 is talking about casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Let's learn about that. Let's go to Revelation. Let's turn together in our Bibles. Revelation chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 8 through 11. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, 
who lives forever and ever. The twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So here again, another verse that uses the three holy, the word holy together, three times. And in verse 2, now, of course, this is Revelation 4, where John is seeing in a vision the throne of heaven. That must have been a very, truly awesome sight. I know that word is thrown around, and I try very hard. And I remember teaching our children... <laughs> Don't use the word awesome the way people so flippantly say it. That truly awesome is, I think, something that we need to keep in a Bible <laughs> meaning. But that was an uh, awesome and amazing sight that John was allowed to see. Now, in the verse here, verse 2, it talks about cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee. We first see cherubim in Genesis when they are driven out when Adam and Eve are driven out of the Garden of Eden cherubim are put there to guard the Garden of Eden and there's a flaming sword there we also know that cherubim are what was to be on top of to be fashioned on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant and their wings were they were toward each other, their wings covering the mercy seat. And there are other, there's more places in the Bible. Um, they are also to be embroidered on curtains for the tabernacle. There are more places about the cherubim. Let's look where the seraphim are. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah, where we had read before. Let's go back to Isaiah and back to um, chapter 6. And we're going to read, we're going to read um, starting in verse 2 this time. Isaiah 6, verse 2. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And let's hop down to verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. And that is one of the seraphim that flew to Isaiah. Okay, so um, I would say, I would say cherubim and seraphim are heavenly winged creatures which serve around the throne. Uh, some people believe they're angels, kinds of angels. I'm going to stick with saying they're heavenly winged creatures that serve God around the around the throne or things that they have been sent to do. And just keep Bible things with <laughs> with what it says in the Bible. So, um let's see. Let's also let's read Let's go on to verse 3 and read verse 3 of the helm. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. 
So let's find some more. Let's look up some more verses that we can learn a little more about this helm since it's so important that we understand the hymns that we sing in worship. And this is a hymn we sing very often in worship. Let's go to Isaiah 59. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 59. Number uh, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So that goes to that they're not the sin, the sin in, in man's life is hiding him from God. And men will hide themselves away because they don't want to do what God asks of us. So let's also look at Isaiah 46. Go back a few chapters, Isaiah 46, and we're going to read verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. And that goes right to, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. God is perfect, and he is holy, and he is deserving of our worship and our obedience. And it is mankind that separates themselves from God through disobedience. But we can come back to God by obeying what is commanded of us in the New Testament, and we can come back into that fellowship with God. All right, let's also, let's turn to Psalm. Let's turn to Psalm 18. And we're going to look at verse 30. Psalm 18, 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. That's a comforting verse, and it, and it just shows us again, God is perfect. His way, the word of the Lord, is proven. It's what we need. Over and over again, we say, the Bible is our guidebook. It is our guidebook. It is what we need to keep and to study from. Now, let's go ahead and read verse 4. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. And then let's go back to the way we had it. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. I'm looking at two different versions of this helm. I want to make sure I'm using the right one. Okay, so from verse 4, let's, staying in the book of Psalms, let's read Psalm 100. Psalm 100, very familiar, very encouraging psalm. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. It's a beautiful hymn for us to remember and recite and, 
and read over and over again for encouragement. That is, God is the one who deserves our worship and our praise and to know that we are to be thankful to him. Let's also, staying in Psalm, let's go to Psalm 19, Psalm 19, and let's read verse 1. Psalm 19, and remember, stay with me and don't take my word for this. Follow along in your Bible. Psalm 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. And that goes right back to all thy work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. The heavens declare the glory of God. It is amazing how some can see the beauty of this earth, the, the parts of the world that are so perfectly made and perfectly kept together and not believe there was a creator who did all of this. It could not happen by chance. Let's, let's think of things logically. It cannot happen by chance. It was from the mind of a perfect creator, the one true God who created all of this. And our Bibles have everything laid out clearly and logically for us to read and to learn from. Let's not listen to men and what they try and say and all of the crazy ideas they come up with. The things happened, just happened. Cannot be. It cannot be. So let's believe in our Creator and be thankful for our Creator and all that He has done for us. So this hymn, Holy, 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 is a wonderful hymn for us to learn from. And so this was a little bit of a shorter lesson today. A good hymn that when, when we sing it in worship, let's think about how very privileged and how easy it is to worship and how we need to worship correctly and how important it is to sing these hymns with understanding. So we'll be together again next time when we learn another hymn. Thanks for being here today.